Hello. Well, uh, I just wanted to come on and just talk about some stuff that I've uh, been thinking about for a while and also from things I've seen um, in news that is local or in part of a major news network because at this point I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I have very little interest in either of those to things for uh, any kind of news, because it's like, you know, the local news is just kind of like perpetuating sort of fear, um, except for the weather. You know, the weather is the only thing that's like fairly safe <laughs> from that, um, which I think is quite sad. Anyway, um, you know, a lot has been going on about this whole virus in certain places in America in particular, um, that's what I'm going to keep it as. I know there are, I have some viewers who aren't from America, and that's, you know, that's cool. But, uh, being from a state that's been reopened and hasn't had to shut down or be somewhat shut down or even thinking about doing any of those things, um, it's quite clear that uh, here in America, in certain states and cities, um, that the politicians do not want uh, to relinquish their emergency powers, and they're trying to prolong the fear-mongering of this virus. Uh, then more so than they probably should. Um, they should have probably uh, <clears throat> given up their uh, emergency powers uh, quite some time ago. Um, though with certain places with rioting and stuff, well, should have uh, gotten a handle of that. But you know, they decided not to. In some places just let it go and happen. Uh, I remember uh, here after uh, what happened with George Floyd, which obviously is terrible. No one's really debating that. Some think people are, but I don't know who was, but whatever. I guess they know something that I don't. But regardless of that, there was a few days when of the week when, you know, May and June sort of were in the same week. Um, last few days of May, first few days of June, you know, there was protests, you know, and that's fine, but then it wasn't really rioting, per se, um, <clears throat> at least not to the degree that we've seen in other places, but, you know, I guess whatever you call the rioting that happened here in Des Moines, it was really centralized in one certain area, but then that uh, quickly uh, dissipated and disappeared, probably because people, you know, you know, got their job back or they're going to go to uh, have an interview, you know, because you know basically life has just went as normal, um, and uh, but. Outside of that one little moment uh, here, everything's really been normal since uh, everything reopened. And for the most part, it seemed like uh, uh, things were returning to normal in most places, but certain spikes apparently happened in certain states like California, Texas, and Florida. Those states basically shut down, though uh, it was then found out that uh, the number that was um, said to be associated with uh, uh, Florida of 11,000 people <clears throat> being diagnosed with the virus, well, the number was actually 4,000. Uh, so 7,000 people were falsely diagnosed, and it seems to be you know, purposely done, which I think is quite dangerous. Uh, Especially if uh, 
doctors knew they didn't have have this, but they purposely told them uh, that they did. Um, of course, you know, certain places in the news talked about this briefly, but then they just kind of uh, uh, made that go away because, well, that, that means this isn't as horrifying as... Uh, this isn't a, as horrifying of a disease as they want it to be because, well, without fear mongering, uh, what, you know, they, they, it's like, well, what are they going to do? Actually report the news? They can't do that these days. That's just, you know, people who actually report on the news here in this country, it, it, it seems to be quite rare. So, you know, especially for any kind of real news organization. So, what then? Well, then people are now going to doubt certain numbers of cases when it comes out because, well, some people are uh, get a false negative, some people get false positives, uh, and they have another test and other stuff, and then, well, it turns out they either actually did have it or they didn't. Um, you know, I, uh, I actually got tested uh, to see if I have it, and uh, it wasn't a horrible experience, but it was kind of weird. Uh, you know, they shove this th thing up your nose. It's like a big Q-tip. And once they do that, they then do it to the other end on the other side. And, uh, you know, I, I came back negative. Um, never felt sick from it. Um, I was always fine, didn't have any real cough. If I did cough, it was just a, you know, a normal cough one might have on a fairly regular basis. So, you know, eat too much or you just start coughing or, or whatever reason, but, you know, it's not a, constant cough. I never had a constant cough this year, which is good, uh, especially during all this. And, uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't the most pleasant thing I had to do, but it wasn't horrible. I've heard some people have had, didn't have a very good experience with, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> uh, testing and all that, but maybe it's because of whoever did it, or maybe, who knows, uh, maybe, they, maybe they had something to do with it, and like, maybe they moved and they shouldn't have, or who knows. But, you know, as far as I know, uh, the people I know, like friends and family, you know, they're pretty much fine, so you know, that's good. Um, and uh, regarding the, those, some of those places that uh, have higher numbers of people who are diagnosed, but turns out it's not that high. Some of those places are forcing people to wear masks all the time, and you know there's been this debate of do masks actually help this at all? Some people say, yes, it does. And some say, no, it doesn't. Like, you know, if you're going to get the disease or the virus, you're just going to get it. Nothing on your face and over your nose, you know, covering your nose and mouth, nothing like that can ever help you. Can't stop it or whatever. Now, I don't really know what to think with all of that, so, you know, I'm... I... <laughs> you know, I'm no real expert there, but it's interesting, uh, to say the very least, um, uh, to see that discussion and back and forth. Uh, but I can see the point of how, you know, a mask, if they're not very uh, thick, in particular with many layers, I can definitely see why, you know, 
the argument will be made, well, that's not really going to help you. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Um, so, you know, that's a... Uh, so that's going to be a topic of discussion throughout all of this. Um, it, it is just sad, though, that certain places are fudging the numbers to make the cases seem higher than they really are. Um, even in places like where I live, Des Moines, you know, it's the capital of Iowa, um, and we're seen as a hot, like a hot zone, hot spot for any sort of potential rise in cases, but while people do have it, and occasionally there are people who still get it that didn't have it before, um, the numbers have been decreasing quite a bit. Less and less people, as the weeks go on, don't have it uh, either anymore, or they never had it and they still don't. Um, and that even uh, seems to be the case in some of these places here that have been shut down. Um, now, for the most part, it seems like uh, the symptoms overall seems to be very reminiscent of the flu for most people. Um, and in some of these hot spot areas, uh, be it in total states or cities, um, that constantly have less and less cases, you know, it's, uh, people say it seems like we're just in some sort of flu season now, because a lot of the people seem to have symptoms that seem to be like the flu, and in fact, a lot of the people who were uh, misdiagnosed in Florida actually had the flu, or something that would be considered milder, so... You know, that's also something that to really, uh, I think, keep in mind. Um, and another thing um, that I saw uh, being discussed is, you know, about 10 years ago or so, there was the swine flu. Uh, it was a big thing. A lot of people got it. A lot of people, many people died. Um, it was like a worldwide pandemic. But I remember hearing about it in 2009, but that was like a big few months um, where I lived or, or live, whatever um, no, it was, it was 2009 was my, uh, when I finished my freshman year in high school and began my sophomore year so you know, I uh, remember hearing about that for a while but then it just went away um, and people have pointed out that why, like, the, basically, uh, you, we didn't need to wear masks or any social distancing with the swine flu, you know. But that was seen as a big pandemic, similar to this. Now, I guess the only difference is, like, this disease was made in a lab, I guess, for research, or, you know, nobody really knows why this was made. Um, the... the Jury seems to be completely out on that. No real answers as to why, but and we may never know. But regardless, um, people were pointing out how, in some ways, there seem to be some similarities between these two diseases, in that you know, many people get it, many people pass away. But many people don't. Many people are, you know, if they get sick, they have some symptoms, but then they get better. And that happens to be that most people. Um, so uh, it was then pointed out how 2009, you know, that wasn't an election year. So therefore, it wasn't seen as a big deal uh, compared to this time around. This time around it's made a huge deal because it's an election year. Um, so, you know, uh, then it makes you then look at 
some of these places where lockdowns still happened or re or happened again. Certain places are not opening for one reason or another. And um, just, uh, it, it, it just, it seems to be quite, quite uh, politically motivated uh, in certain places. Um, it doesn't seem to be that case where I live, so, I mean, that's good. At least not from what I've seen. I hope that it stays that way. Uh, but, you know, it is sad. There, there appears to be some political motivation behind what's going on in certain places in the country. Um, of course, you know, in other parts of the world, I have no clue about any election going on. Um, so I can't speak to say if anything similar is going on in some other country. But that does appear to be the case in certain states in America. Um, and that's sad. Um, I remember in certain places, like in New York, uh, the mayor he, early on said, uh, you know, put, put a lot of the patients, uh, because the hospitals were, you know, uh, getting full and too many people were out there without any actual help. So put them in, you know, retirement homes and other places where older people are, you know. Then you see a big spikes of well, deaths, and you see around that time with March and April, a lot of them were uh, elderly people in, like, New York City. So when people say there's a big, huge spike in deaths here, well, uh... You really have to look at where these places are, who was in charge, and what was going on. And in the case of New York City, that seems to be, well, there's the answer as to why in that particular city of that state, there was a quite a spike of deaths. And it's very unfortunate um, that those people uh, died especially from the stupidity of a politician who thought it was a real good idea to put uh, uh, people who, because of hospitals being overloaded and having no more room, they thought it would be a good idea for those people to be in retirement homes and other places where el elderly people were uh, living, or at least were around. They didn't live somewhere. So, you know, that's quite dangerous, especially since it was made perfectly clear early on that uh, elderly people are the, who are, who are affected the worst by this disease. Younger people who are fairly healthy, if they get it, they have a better chance of living. People who are more susceptible to sickness are a bit more at risk too. Um, maybe not necessarily to the risk as much as uh, an elderly person, though it also would then depend on who, the, who that person is, you know. Um, it was also said that if people have the coronavirus and have to, you know, uh, go out, you know, actually have to go to stores, it should be the people who wear the masks are those who have the virus, as well as people who are susceptible to being sick. Everybody else doesn't have to wear a mask, which, you know, that does make a, quite a bit of sense. And, you know, and I guess you could have some social distancing or whatever in place if you think that would actually help um, or not. Um, I don't know. Sure, there's a debate there of whether social distancing really does anything or not. I guess because you know the germs can just spread quite far and wide. Doesn't matter if you're six feet apart. You know, I'm sure there's a discussion of that going on somewhere. I haven't really heard that, but it just kind of came to mind that I'm sure there's going to be 
an argument against how that social distancing doesn't work very well. I mean, there's always going to be some sort of back and forth with uh, things like uh, social distancing and mask wearing. Um, so, you know, but uh, it appears that, you know, For the most part, uh, the curve was flattened in America in April, and then it made sense for in May places to reopen. It's just obviously unfortunate with the protests that have divulged into rioting in certain places in this country. Really, only Portland and Seattle, for the most part, are really showing this. I guess some people say Chicago, but I, th I think with Chicago, there's a lot of other things going on. It doesn't really have to do with any sort of protesting much. Um, heard some stuff in Texas, but uh, that's off and on. I've I've seen it isn't a complete constant uh, thing at this point. Um, but you know, I don't know. I guess unless people are from Texas and talk about news related things that are not going to be always focusing on Texas which does actually make quite a bit of sense um, it's a uh, all of this is a real uh, it's a mess in certain places um, obviously I hope all uh, as well wherever you are I hope you're safe and fine and if you happen to be sick with the virus well hope you get better um, uh, and, you know while for most people it does seem to be you have like flu symptoms and then it goes away um, for some people it is different I guess it would affect people differently. It's not just going to have the exact same symptoms for everybody who gets it. Um, so that seems to be something that you know I've heard, and uh, yeah, it's just it's very unfortunate. Uh, I this is just uh, an odd. An odd time. Um, you know, 2020 for me has been a bad year, honestly. It's been a pretty good year. So, it's been annoying when uh, certain films I'd wanted to see this year have been pushed back and theaters were closed. But, you know, aside from that, um, uh, sort of annoyance, uh, it's really been a fairly normal year for the most part. Um, just a bit different going out to, you know, going to the store and getting things. Uh, that's the really the only real difference I found. So, uh, but for the most part, things are fairly normal uh, where I live. But I know in other places, they're not normal. Uh, and uh, I hope they get normal soon. I uh, hope a lot of this stuff is just stops, uh, especially where politicians seem to be uh, abusing their emergency powers during a time like this, and they reopen uh, places and just let things resume as normal, um, or at least as normal as they possibly can be in certain cities or states, because depending on the city state you know uh, might be a while before uh, what, what is seen as normal returns there um, you know not every place will be like here where I live and be quite normal um, I am quite aware of that uh, but I do hope uh, wherever you are you are safe hope you're doing well uh, you're having a good day and that uh, your week is good and uh, hope when the weekend arrives you'll enjoy it so uh, 
that's really all I wanted to say. I hope um, all is well and all keeps going well uh, for you all. Uh, so uh, probably be back uh, with another video sometime this week, movie related. Um, but I just wanted to make something that was a bit different again. Uh, just some stuff on my mind. Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, overall I got the points I've wanted to uh, say out, and as well as I possibly could. Um, yeah, I pretty much uh, tackled it all. Um, oh, another thing. Um, I'm up the swine flu, um, <clears throat> and the comparisons between this virus and that one. It seems by this point, or at least late July that I saw this, but, you know, but, uh, yeah, still fairly early to August, uh, but, you know, at least as of late July, uh, from the moment the swine flu was a real big problem, the same as months in, I heard and saw of certain places, though, of course, these now in these articles, those might have been redacted or changed or something now. I don't know, but at least what I've read. There were more deaths from the swine flu as many months in uh, as of July than the virus uh, has, uh, this virus has caused deaths uh, in the same amount of time. Uh, and that's for America, too. You know, it's not worldwide. Um, but... I did think that would be uh, at least good to know, or at least note. Um, I'll try to find one of those uh, articles I saw. Though I'll probably also double check just to see just how accurate that is. Um, sometimes they redact certain information. Things are edited because, you know, if, if it was the truth, well, maybe that they were talking too much truth <laughs> in an article. And they're like, well, we don't want that kind of news to go out. Um, but I'll see what I can find. Um, uh, Google searching and stuff with this, it's just kind of... Sometimes it gets bogged down, so it could be a bit difficult. But I'll do my best. Um, but if I can't, hopefully... Somebody will uh, post uh, an article or something that can help, uh, you know, see and verify if that is actually correct. Um, but yeah, uh, wanted to just say that just so uh, I kind of cover all the bases of everything I wanted to talk about. And uh, with that, uh, it seems like I have. So, you know, have a great day, have a great week, and a great weekend when the weekend arrives. And I'll see you all next time.